Dude, I'm liking the music. <laughs> Aloha, everybody. <laughs> Oh my stars. Okay, let's get in our usual testies to see if everything are um working. Mic seems to be good. Yes, yes. Yeah, the volume seems to be good. Is it too loud? Verdict is, verdict is. I might lower the music a little bit. Just a smidgen. I keep the voices a smidgen higher because I don't know. I didn't know this game had voice acting in it until it said voice volume. So I was like, oh, voice acting? <laughs> hey, Mandy. <laughs> Hi, Firedale. Welcome to the street. <coughs> Ow. Now I got to throw out the whole Then choked myself. But let's get oh yeah, this is killer trait. This is um a a thriller? A thriller visual novel where we are trying to clear our name after we were accused of a crime because we were supposed to be a detective or something. And I don't exactly know anything more than that, but we're supposedly working with a serial killer, which is this guy here. I think his name is Oz. So yeah, let's get into it. I like thrillers. Oh yeah, this is not a yandere sim, but apparently he is dateable. So we shall find that out. Oh, <laughs> silly peanut cussing out his papa. I mean, his dad, not papa. Let go. What time is it? It's 7.30 a.m. Ew! Okay, still good. Thank God I set the alarm yesterday. Properly, this time. No matter how much I want to, binge watching anime so late into the night isn't a very good idea when I have to wake up early. Well, not every night, at least. As soon as I give my limbs a good stretch, I check the notifications on my ho hotel, hotel calendar. Big day at work. Get up super early. My lips form a smile. Once I finish brushing my teeth, I get dressed and grab my satchel. Wait, I'm missing something. I give a quick glance to the room until I find what I'm looking for right on top of my desk. Here you are, you little rascal, you. I pick it up. It reads... Him oh! 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 Well, my name is Althemia. Choose your pronouns. She, her. This identification card certifies that... Alphemia Darby, <laughs> I don't get to choose my last name, who uses she, her pronouns, is commissioned as a criminal profiler by- <gasps> I'm a profiler? It's like my dream job. <laughs> soon, very soon, there will be a completely new world written, new word written on this ID. Just you wait. All right, let's do this. We gotta get the noms first. But first thing first, I can't start the day without a good breakfast. And I forgot I ran out of food. <sighs> Man, I love living by myself, but having to buy groceries constantly is such a pain in the ass. I hope that one day online delivery evolves to such an extent that everything you buy gets teleported right into your kitchen. Ah! Look, look, look. 
doesn't hurt to dream, right? Anyway, not much I can do in the grasp of reality. I guess I'll just grab something at a coffee shop or whatever. Hmm. Are there any good ones nearby? I haven't had much of a chance to visit any food establishment since I moved to this neighborhood. I take out my phone from my jacket and start browsing cafes with decent hoodle reviews. Is it hoodle? Or is it hoodle? 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 Hoodle, 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 hoodle. Let's see here. Cup of coffee, 4.5 stars, 25 reviews. Never heard of this one before. Maybe it's relatively new. It does seem like a nice enough place, and the food looks cute, which is always great in my book. Yeah, I'm sold. Keys in hand, I walk to the door. And head out. Let's go. Unlike the last couple of days, which were constantly threatened by the heavy rain forecast, this morning is bright, sunny, and there's a breeze in the air. Guess the storm passed right through instead of gracing us with its presence. I walk along the road to the Golden Meadows, slowly but surely getting closer to my destination. Well, at least according to Hoodle Maps... I don't usually head this way when I go to work. My brain is usually in auto mode in, in the mornings. Especially if I need to get somewhere quick. Like, well, my job. If you'll forgive the repetition. Maybe I should reconsider changing my route from time to time for such a bustling city. This park is pretty chill. I don't think I've seen more than a few joggers and one or two people walking their dogs. Still, why is it called Golden Meadows? Wouldn't it make more sense to call it Silver Meadows given that we're in Silver Ring City and all that jazz? The trees don't even give that golden during the fall. <coughs> Ow. Yeah. I definitely need some coffee if I'm already thinking about random shit like this. Two blocks of walking later, my journey has come to an end. You've arrived at your destination. I close Hoodle Maps and enter the cafe. Oh, is it supposed to be like Google? So it is Hoodle. The distinct smell of coffee hits me straight away. Several pastries can be can be seen near the re register too. It's not that big of a place, but it isn't small either. Well, Ali, you don't drink coffee, so not so realistic. I do drink coffee once in a blue moon. In fact, the size is just right. It adds to the coziness. I glance down at the picture and the reviews once again. They're certainly eye-catching, but they don't do it justice. It really goes without saying. There are some things in life that are better to see for yourself. Welcome. A warm greeting from the cashier brings me right back to Earth. Oh no, he's hot! The name's Arthur. What will you be having today? Oh, hi. I can't, I can't stop staring. <laughs> Sorry, I was a bit distracted. First time. Guess it was too obvious, huh? <laughs> I'm kind of tempted to ask him why he's wearing his coat like that. What can I say? You're not the only first timer to get lost in thought as soon as they enter. Ah. <laughs> Scratch that. Why is he wearing one in the first place when he works indoors? Wouldn't a sweater make more sense? 
But to be fair, I do try to make this place look as charming as possible. Maybe it's a new trend. Moving on. Let's actually be a part of the conversation, Althemia. Wow. Do you own this place? Right on. <laughs> That's really cool. I don't know many cafes where you see the owner on the job. You work here by yourself, Arthur? I do have another employee who helps me bake pretty often, but recently he's been handling deliveries whenever he's not at his uh, other jobs. Huh? Other jobs? Eh, it's not a big cafe, so I don't have to worry too much. I see. Well, that was weird. Does his employee have a strange side job or something? Do they also wear their coat like Arthur here? Anyway, sorry. I was just trying to make small talk, but uh, got a bit sidetracked. Are you ready to order? Oh, right. That's why I came here in the first place. LOL. Hmm, let's see. I glance at the menu hanging by the wall. Apart from coffee, tea, and juice, there seems to be a moderate variety of pastries and a few savory options. A latte bears, bear cacchino, blueberry pie, teddy bear roll, hamburger, Bernard's cobble tea. Someone here is really fond of bears. And puns. Also, who the hell is Bernard? <laughs> I'm having a bit of trouble deciding. Do you have any recommendations? Whoa. First thing first, do you happen to be a vegetarian or a vegan? No. I'm good with anything. It's nice to see you have more options, though. Right on. Right on, right on. And is this for here to go? Ah! Well, I figured out how to save to go. Hopefully this gives me the energy boost I need. Ah, uh, is it an important day? Yeah. You could say that. Arthur smiles and nods. Of course. Give me five. Arthur heads towards the machine and a few steps from the register and in no time starts grinding some coffee beans. When he's done with that, I see him grab what looks like a milk frother. And it's then that I realize he's making a latte. Once there's enough foam, Arthur raises the frothed milk to a relatively high position and begins pouring it into a paper cup. The more the cup gets filled, the lower he steeps his hand until there's nothing left to pour. Finally, he covers the latte with a lid and grabs a pastry from the glass display. Thank you for waiting. Here's our takeaway latte cup. If you need an energy boost, this'll do the trick. Oh, it's so cute. Look at the little bear. The latte Arthur gives me has an adorable sticker with the logo of the cafe on top of the cardboard sleeve. And guess this little one is Bernard. Cub of coffee. It really is a very fitting name. And this is one of our <gasps> most popular pastries. The Berry Big Bun. Oh, my stars! It's so cute! It's almost too cute to eat! It's filled with custard. Much like its name, the bun is shaped like a bear. A berry big bear. Oh. Thank you, Arthur. These look so good. I can't wait to try them. Glad to hear it. Have a good day now, won't you? Mm. A very good day. <laughs> I definitely will now. See you. Come again. Arthur raises a hand in farewell as I exit the shop. That took a little longer than I thought. But it's okay. It doesn't hurt to have a little push once in a while. I take out my phone to check the time. 8.30? Holy shit, I'm going to be late. God, I'm dying. 
Note to self, don't run while trying not to spill any coffee. Or any of your belongings, for that matter. Actually, don't run when going to work. Period. Thank God this lid is tougher than a fucking marmalade jar. <sighs> well, at least I won't be late now. Still, it's kind of a miracle that I didn't bump into anyone. Ruby Road is pretty crowded today. While I'm waiting for the street light to change, I take a look at my berry bun. And that chunkiness. That shine. It's like it's calling to me. It's so cute. Aw, hello, Peanut. Hello, Peanut. Okay, if you look at me like that, I guess I'll have to take a bye. Hey, you! Get out of the way! What? Uh, I see a bicycle approaching. Uh! uh. What the? No! The bear bun died. <laughs> no! Bernard! It succumbed to a bicycle's wheel. Oh my fucking god! You've gotta be kidding me! And that voice. I turn around to spot the identity of the bear bun murderer. He hasn't fared much better. The delivery backpack he was carrying has spilled some of its contents, too. How in the hell did my latte survive, but not these? The guy glares at me. You. Hi. Why the fuck didn't you move when I told you to, dumbass? Why the fuck you run me over with your bike? Excuse me? Uh, I don't even want to give him to this idiot the time of day. Ignore him. Nah, forget it. I don't even have the sl... Nah, forget it. I don't e have even the slightest interest in entertaining this conversation. Besides, I can always buy another bun later. My job is more important. Are you listening to me? Hell no! You talking to yourself! Let's scram. Hasta la vista, random delivery guy. Hey, get back here! I give you the one finger salute. <laughs> Toodaloo now. Woo! Made it. Barely. It's almost 9 a.m. Well, at least I'm not late. After taking the elevator and walking down the third floor hallway, I arrive at the office of the Criminal Investigations Department. Close call, eh? Hi, Carl. Not even a minute has gone by, and I already have the pleasure of dealing with my desk neighbor. I almost thought you wouldn't make it. Not like you. Not like you at all. Blood ran cold or something. As if. I just got breakfast somewhere else, and it was a bit crowded. Whatever helps you sleep at night, kiddo. Oh, shut up, Carl. <laughs> anyway. Hate to cut the conversation short, but I need to take care of some really important business. Okay. Carl puts a hand on his chest in feigned shock. Come on, kiddo. You're not even going to ask what? No, I could care less. Oh, for the love of... No. Patience, Althemia. Remember, today's special. Sure, Carl. What's this important business? It's confidential. I'm gonna put a foot up your ass, doo da, doo da. I'm going to get fired today, all the doo da day. 
I have a strong urge to throw my monitor so that it conveniently lands on his head. <laughs> you should see the look on your face. Nah, well, I guess I can tell you. What? He started it. He swivels his coffee chair around and scoots over to shorten the distance. Then he leans into me with his hand close to his mouth like he's about to reveal a secret. Hmm. You know David from the second floor? The engineer? Yeah, yeah, him. Turns out he bought the wrong SD card for the surveillance cameras at the detention center. Eh. And you know this, how? Hmm. Anyway. I happened to arrive early and saw him panic on the phone, probably talking to his partner or something. Thing is, Guy was scared shitless, going off about how the cabs would go full at any moment, about how he could lose his job. Um, this game is still in the demo phases, but I think Carl here is going to get a sprite once the game comes out, like, fully. Which, to be fair, yeah, he could. Can't he go buy a replacement? No can do. He's got to check the CCTV cams from the latest crime scene, kiddo. Oh, now that you mention it. Anyway. He said he'd replace them tomorrow morning without fail. Again, you know this. How? Mm. He gives me a knowing smile. Or really, Carl? You could get turned in for this. What makes you think I won't say anything to the boss? No, oh, kiddo. David's not the only one I've got dirt on. <laughs> Wearing a triumphant smile, he scoots away and stops right at his working spot. Carlis Renard, better known as Carl, is one of the people who's been working here the longest. For how long, though, nobody knows, and nobody in the department dares to ask him including me. I don't think he's that much older than us, yet he calls everyone kiddo for some reason. Well, everyone except for our division's boss and the chief of police. I can never tell if Carl's blackmailing schemes are just for show or the real deal. How the hell did someone like him become a police officer? Whatever. I get to my own work area right next to the pile of boxes. Someone should really take these away. Why are there still so many paper files? Just digitize everything. We're in the 21st century for Pete's sake. Oh. No, now's not the time to vent your frustrations on a mass of cardboard, Althemia. <laughs> right as I turn to my monitor, wait, right as I turned on my monitor, I hear the unmistakable laugh of my superior. Right now. Aslan? Like the, uh, like the lion from Narnia? Althemia, my dear partner. Morning, boss. Yikes. No, I told you to stop calling me that. It feels so cold and formal. Come on. What did we just talk about the other day? But... Soon enough, we'll be equals, you know. Calling me boss won't be an accurate description anymore. So why not get used to calling me by my name starting now? Equals, huh? I mean, that's only if I succeed in finding the criminal, right? Althemia, Althemia, that was just a figure of speech. You really think the chief would go back on his word after the hard work you've put in these past few years? No. Let's try again. Morning, Althemia. <sighs> Morning, Aslan. Or Aslan. That's amazing. Atta girl. That wasn't so hard now, was it? I guess not. To think this bundle of energy is my boss. Although, I see him almost every day. It's very hard to believe sometimes. Unless he's using his out-of-this-world analytical skills, that is. 
he's not the chief of the criminal investigations department for nothing. And once today's over, I'm going to work alongside him as a fellow detective from now on. No more Miss Assistant. So, where did we leave off yesterday? There was a lead on Tiger's possible whereabouts. Ah, that's right. Any news on that regard? Unfortunately, just another person claiming to be him. Are you for real? God, what is wrong with these people? Do they seriously think serial killers are a joke? As if I didn't have enough already with the dumbasses ringing the headquarters thinking they've figured out the culprit just because they read murder on the Orient Express. There's all sorts of people in this world. Unbelievable. <sighs> I guess I can see the charm of claiming to be a defender of justice. It's just not the right way. A murderer. Is still a murderer. Oh, I just noticed his eyes change colors. God, he can get scary sometimes. Well, on the bright side, we do know quite a few important details regarding Tiger, don't you think? He's a man, possibly in his late 20s to early 30s, with outstanding physical capabilities. He's always, he always uses a sharp object as his killing method, most likely a knife. He's bound to use some sort of camouflage or disguise to lower people's guards. And... I take out an envelope from my satchel. He always leaves a calling card. Are you for real? How did you get that? Shouldn't forensics be analyzing it? Oh, they are, along with everything else at the crime scene. This is just a replica that I asked them to make for us. I'm afraid I don't follow. I have a play at Aslod. Hear me out, okay? Go ahead. We should make a copycat crime. Not a real one, of course. Just something that would trick Tiger into coming our way. We can prepare a fake murder and use this replica to alert the media that Tiger struck again. If this was just any other killer, I doubt it'd work. But this is Tiger we're talking about. Someone with such a strong sense of justice won't tolerate his name being dragged through the mud. That's amazing! You're a genius, Althemia, Althemia. Ah! This one grabs my shoulders. For being a killer. Tiger is a prideful guy. If he finds out that the police, no less, is trying to ruin his name, he will lose his mind. Before I can give an answer, Aslan takes the calling card replica out of my hands. Partner. In fact, why don't we go even further and make the chief a fake target? Eh? You think he'll agree to it? If it's for a good cause, he won't mind. And I'd consider catching a serial killer who's been a pain in our asses for the last few months to be a good cause, no? Well, when you put it like that, probably, yeah. Atta girl. Should I contact the chief now, then? Nah, don't fret. I'll take care of everything. Are you sure? Yep. I'm not the leader of the criminal investigations department for nothing. And let Boss show you what he's made of before you can't call me that anymore. <laughs> okay, okay. When should we put the plan in motion then? This evening? What? Are you serious? The faster the better, right? We don't know when Tiger will strike again after all. Not to mention the amount of time he takes from murder to murder is getting shorter. That's true. Can we actually do it? Okay, got it. I'll help you with some details we might need to make the story more believable. I even know someone from the Target News Agency who would get here at the drop of a hat once we call him. God, Althemia, Althemia, what would I do without you? He'd be hopeless. Got me there. 
Okay, I'll go on ahead with the preparations then. Could you send me the number for your contact in the news? I'd like to have it, just in case. Sure thing, I'll send you a message. Got it. Thanks, partner. You're amazing. <laughs> I try. See you later, Aslan. Ta -ta. Aslan starts to walk towards the hallway until something makes him stop in his tracks. He comes back. Althemia. Yes? Congratulations on your promotion. <laughs> Thank you. Ta -ta. Smell you later, partner. What a weird morning it's been. Well, no matter. Let's get to work. Whew. Time goes by fast when you're concentrating. I wonder if Aslan's already finished with the preparations. I only need to call Patrick for the scoop, and we'll be all set. Maybe I could get some coffee from the machine on the second floor in the meantime. Uh, I'll never get used to these horrible orange stripes on the wall. Who the hell designed this building? Thank God I don't have to see them unless I'm moving around from floor to floor. Anyway, coffee, coffee. You're the guy who ran me over with his bike. Who's that? I don't think he's from this division. Wait a second. He seems familiar. When I start approaching him, the red-haired man makes eye contact. Fuck. What? Hey! Ah. What the? Hazlund's calling. Hello? Hey, Althemia, Althemia, could you fetch the chief from his office? We're ready to move the plan along. Hi, Aslan, sure thing. Oh, should I call Patrick now then? Nah, don't worry, I already took care of it. What? Are you for real? <laughs> Looks like my catchphrases are rubbing off on you. And yeah, Patrick was glad to help when I told him you referred him to me. I see, that's great. I'll go ahead and get the chief then. Had a girl. That's my partner. With a smile on my face, I hung up and put the phone in my pocket. Okay, no time for distractions. Let's do this! Chief Barrows, we're ready for the... Hmm? Where is he? That's... odd. It smells like blood. Please tell me this is a joke. He couldn't have been. No, snap out of it, Althemia. You've got to stop assuming the worst every single time. Let's just make sure first. I take one step, then another, and another, and another, until I'm right next to the desk. And then I look behind it, Sprawled on the floor over a small pool of blood. And the unmoving corpse of Arden Barrows, the former chief. Fucking knew it. I wasn't done reading that. But okay. A red-haired man comes out from the cupboard and on the right side of the desk. This guy was the one on the street. I knew I recognized him from somewhere. He just put on a wig and some makeup to cover his burn scar. You police moron, set me up! And if he's here, there's no one else he could be but... Tiger! Hooray! You earn a fucking gold star! Now you better tell me what the fuck is going on. Did you kill this guy to try and pin it on me? What? Oh, honey, you shouldn't have. Hey, I didn't do anything. What? I didn't do anything. Didn't you kill him? 
dipshit. Would I be asking you if I did? I'm a killer, not a fucking liar. You should sort out your standards, man. Okay, let's suppose for a second that he's actually telling the truth. Who would actually believe that? Like, seriously, the scene is pretty damning. For both of us. Even if you didn't kill him, you don't exactly have a clean record, you know? Why do those emojis look familiar? Craven. That's why. Those are Craven's emojis. Look, I... Over there! Oh, shit. A number of officers enter the office. I can see a few colleagues peeking from the door's entrance as well, including Carl. So it's true. Unbelievable. It's just as Mr. King said. What? Put your hands in the air! Reluctantly, Tiger does as he says. Can't beat a gun, after all. Tiger, you're under arrest for the murder of Arden Barros and several other people. You have the right to remain silent. One of the officers handcuffs Tiger's wrists and starts leading him towards the door. Make way! Make way! This man is dangerous! Before Tiger disappears from my field of view, he glares at me one last time. I won't forget this. I... Keep walking! Hey! I get it already! Once they're out of sight, I turn to the remaining officer in the room. Hey, what did you mean just now? Did you know the chief was murdered even before you came here? He scowls. Playing dumb won't help you, traitor. Traitor? What? What do you mean, traitor? I'm a detective. That's no way to treat your superior. The officer ignores me and points his gun at me. What the fuck? Aslan! Where's Aslan? That's Mr. King to you. What? And considering your involvement in this, the only place you belong in is a filthy jail. Miss Darby. This can't be happening. What? What are you talking about? Involvement? I came here to get the chief, just like you told me. Didn't we plan to make him a fake target just this morning so that Tiger would make his appearance tonight? Heaven's sake, Darby! How would I even accomplish that in such a short time? To think you would resort to spouting fallacies and nonsense the moment you get cornered. Yikes. I never expected this from you. No, I... Then again, I never expected you to be Tiger's accomplice either. The way you knew so much about him. I should have seen the signs. No. No, I was just doing my job. <sighs> Please take her to the detention center. It can't be. Right away, Mr. King. It isn't true. Someone tell me it isn't true. Althemia Darby, you're under arrest for being an accomplice to a serial killer in the murder of Arden Barros. Though I can't stop knocking my knees together, my feet are stuck to the floor. I don't even register the words coming at me. Just the cold metal of the cuffs against my skin. My legs inevitably start moving when I feel a rough tug on my wrist in order to make me walk. In just a moment, officer. His eyes changed again. Hey, Sakura! Haslan approaches me and leans in as if he wants to whisper something. Thanks for your cooperation, partner. Oh. This fucker. This fucker! He was planning to set me up from the very beginning! With my plan! 
You son of a bitch! My sudden outburst catches everyone off guard. The officer, my colleagues, Carl, all except for him. I'll kill you! I'll fucking kill you! <laughs> no matter how much I struggle, no matter how much I scream and flail, I keep being carried off while Aslan grins sar sardonically? Uh. Stay here. Right after shoving me like that, I'm the vermin of the earth. The officer closes the door. What he said, um, thanks for cooperating. Where would I even go, dumbass? I said, Mandy. He's he told he whispered into our ear, thanks for cooperating. Well, well, well. Look what the cat dragged in. Hi. Tiger. Ow. Why am I being bonked? Not pleased to make your acquaintance, dipshit. Wait. Why did they put us in the same detention cell? How the fuck should I know? Hmm. It's not like I'm happy about it either. You're the little dipshit who set me up after all. No. Oh my god! Can you fucking stop that? I already told you it wasn't me. You think I was born yesterday? A lot of people in the police force are fucking stupid, but I know a damn smartass when I see one. You and that pompous asshole who acts like he's got a lion mane up his ass. Both of you set me up. You're half right. Uh, what? The initial plan was to lay a trap for you with a fake target. It was originally my idea. Not going to deny that. But judging from the fact that you got here so quickly without knowing what the hell was going on... And how everyone thought the chief was dead even before coming into the room? I dig my nails into my hands. That bastard must have murdered him and planned to pin the crime on both of us. Huh. And people say I'm a douchebag. Uh, he's the guy who ran us over with a bike earlier today, Mandy. He just has a wig on and, a, and some makeup on. Well, you are a killer, even if you say you're doing it for the greater good. Okay. I won't deny it. I'm surprised you're not losing your shit over all of this, especially considering how you acted before. I mean, even I'm a freaking mess right now. I thought you'd be... angrier? Oh. oh. Make no mistake, I'm seething. But I need to cool my head if I want to get out of here and murder that fucking scumbag. Tempting, but that would be a mercy. As tempting as that is, it would still be a mercy. He'd have it too easy. No, that bastard needs to rot in jail. Kinda mild for my taste, but wouldn't be bad to see the trash go where it belongs for once. He absolutely deserves to be punched, though. <laughs> oh, that I can do. Still, it's too early to think about how we're going to deal with him. We can't do anything while we're stuck here. Dipshit. You're not wrong there, dipshit. Can you stop calling me that? My name's Althemia. Well, excuse me, princess. Patience, Althamia. Patience. You can always punch him later. Ow, why bonk me again? He must be angry, because I'm still technically part of the reason he's here. 
speaking of names, I'm guessing Tiger's not your real name either, right? Why? Why? What are you doing? You guys so mean to me today. No shit. Okay. Patience over. I swear to God, if you keep it up with this hot and cold attitude, I'm going to start calling you dickhead for the rest of your life. Fine. The name's Oz. Happy now? Yes! It's a start. Uh... Whatever. So, Oz. We seem to have... No. We definitely got off on the wrong foot. But if we both want to get revenge on that walking garbage, we need to cooperate. Oh. But I, do, I don't want to kill him. I want to see him rot. I want to see him suffer. Tell you what, Bambi. Bambi? Bambi? If you can use that giant brain of yours to get us the hell out of here, I'm game. I even know someone out there who can help us. Oh, you've got yourself a deal. Banana! Hi, Banana! You're, you're dead? Oh, my stars. How's the con going? How'd it go? After discussing the new plan, we wait for a certain someone to show up. Setup was today? Oh, so you didn't do any um, selling today? I'm guessing that's tomorrow then. Oz nods at me and I get into position. Tomorrow and Sunday? Ah, I wish you all the luck. I hope everything goes good. I saw your setup. It was so cute. Well, I saw your setup twice now, technically. <laughs> it's showtime. I lie on the floor and close my eyes. All right, you two. Time for your meal, but no funny bit. Hey, what happened? It matches perfectly. You totes got it. What do you think happened, moron? Of course she fucking collapsed. But why? Shit, for the love of. So much for being righteous. All you cops are the fucking same. I need to call for her. Hey! You can't leave her alone, asshole. What if she dies? Oh, my stars. What did you do? What? Die? Oh, God. They didn't train me for this. The guard touches my neck with two of his fingers to feel my pulse. I'll just call someone. He starts fiddling with his clothes. Hold on. Didn't surveillance catch this on cam? Err! What a fucking moron. I'm glad I remembered he was the one on duty today. Huh? How is someone this dumb on the police force? Well, he's very athletic, reliable, and kind-hearted. I shouldn't have asked. Ow. Hope your head's okay. After nabbing the key from the guard and opening our handcuffs, we proceed to undress him so that Oz can put on his clothes. Once we cuff him, Oz takes off his red wig and smudges off his makeup. Okay. All yours. I untie the hairband on the wig and, and put it on. Those cameras make me nervous. Are you absolutely sure they're not working right now? Yeah, don't worry. The memory's full. How do you know? Little Carl Renard. Huh? I'll tell you later. Alright, we definitely still can't exit through the entrance, even with the cameras out of the way. And that's not counting the reporters that must be outside. Shit, you're right. How do we leave then? Hmm. The second floor at the back might be doable. Thankfully, this building has windows on both sides. Sounds good to me. I just... Hope you don't leave me behind. Unlike the Lion Trash King, I'm not a fucking traitor, Bambi. Bambi? I'm not getting over that nickname. Okay. Thanks. The layout is super cute. 
I definitely love how you did it. I wish I was closer so I could actually go visit you at the con. So I could... But then again, I'd probably go broke. All your stuff is super cute. Ah! Hey. Ah. Hey. Hey. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> you got guts, Bambi. I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah. You're not so bad yourself. I can't believe we jumped from a window on the second floor and fucking survived. In fact, no matter how good or bad my plan was, I can't believe we even managed to sneak well enough to go unnoticed. Was our security always this lax? It actually kind of irritates me how easily we were able to escape. But, oh well. I'm not part of the police anymore. Okay. Here we are. For the first time since we stopped running, I take a look at the place Oz has brought us to. And I immediately recognize it. You've got to be kidding me. Bambi! For fuck's sakes, Bambi! Move your ass already! I tell you my name and you come up with a nickname for me. Arthur's already not going to like this. But we've really got no other choice. All right, lead the way. Who would have thought? Of all places, a bear-themed cafe. Not that I'm complaining, of course. <sighs> Welcome to our humble abode. Thank you. The cafe has a bit of a different feeling now that it's empty. Okay. Give me a sec, okay? I'm going to go bring Arthur. Ah, sure. Oz heads to the back of the shop and starts going upstairs, to what I assume is the floor they live on. Hey, Artie, got some big fucking news to tell you. Ooh, he gonna be mad. <laughs> His voice gets more and more distant. Arthur, you there? Until I can't hear it anymore. It really is the same cafe, huh? I guess the other employee Arthur mentioned this morning must be Oz then. <sighs> I'm pooped. I'm about to sit on one of the nearby tables when the pastries from the shop's counter grab my attention. Ah, they all look so good. I wonder if... With a bounce in my step, I approach the glass display, only to have my hopes instantly crushed the moment I notice a sign next to the empty plate. We're out of berry big buns. Aw. Bambi. Hey, Bambi. Seems like Arthur hasn't arrived yet. Uh, what are you doing? Before I can muster a reply, he follows my line of sight and hums in understanding. Mm. Enough said. My pastries are fucking delicious. You made them? Hold up, you made them? Uh. Oh, come on. You could at least show some reaction. Yeah, I kind of just did. <laughs> Actually, I kind of already knew. Wait, what? what? It's funny, to be honest. I was here this morning. You're shitting me. No, sorry. I met Arthur and all. He gave me his recommendation. I bought a latte and a pastry and then headed to work. Huh. You don't say. Yep. Well? Uh, well, what? Did you like the bear bun? Please tell me you're joking. Huh? What? <laughs> Why would I joke about this? You ran over my bare butt. Wait, don't tell me. Oh my god, you don't remember. Remember what? A certain incident with a bicycle. For a few seconds, Oz looks at me like I've grown another head. Then his eyes widen. <laughs> you murdered my bare bun. Oh fuck, that was you? Lord, give me strength, for I will kick him in the balls. <laughs> what the hell, dude? I even recognized you with a wig, and you can't even remember the poor person you almost ran over? Hey! I was in a hurry, okay? And it's not like I remember every single person I see on the street. Clearly. I can't believe I'm actually more shocked about this than having my 
having had my bun destroyed is my face that is my face that forgettable it's true that we don't usually remember faces from people we know but look i'll make it up to you okay most of the pastries and desserts we sell here are made by me anyways really why are you surprised now no i mean arthur said that his other employee helped him bake but i didn't think you actually made everything on the menu not everything just the sweet stuff arthur handles the regular cooking and the drinks i see eh it's whatever water under the bridge and all that jazz good thing we made it eh yeah thank god not god thank us we're the ones who got out <laughs> i guess you're right yep home sweet home i don't want to be so sure oh shit Arthur, where were you man i was looking all over oh this man not happy for <laughs> this is not happy for you oh shit oh shit indeed he does not look happy ozzy you got a lot of nerve asking me where i was ozzy yeah. look i did what i had to okay i even wore my usual wig and makeup it was obvious as hell they had some dirty trick up their ass but i couldn't just let a copycat oscar Ugh. that is exactly the reason why you shouldn't have gone why do you never ever think about the consequences of your actions this impulsive nature of yours is going to get you killed someday uh, i'm fine you worry too much oscar i think i don't worry enough what's the point of being your informant if you're going if you're just going to do whatever you want informant hmm. look can we continue to some other time i don't know if you noticed dude but there's someone else here you can yell at me all you want later Hi, Arthur. Um, hello. Great way to get to know people. Just a witness to a random argument and hope for the best. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. I didn't know we had a... Hmm? You look familiar. I yes, I actually came this morning. Of course. Ah, you're the one who had an important day. <laughs> That's me, all right guess i should introduce myself properly i'm althemia well once again it's nice to meet you althemia likewise she helped me escape the police's detention center what um well way to drop a bomb man what are you doing she also works for the police what it's technically not anymore is he doing it on purpose I need to sit down. Yeah, I bet. I look at Oz, demanding an explanation. He just shrugs. I don't like beating around the bush. At least give me a warning next time. Fine, whatever. I can't believe this guy. Why is this happening? Artie. I'll explain everything. I see. And then he betrayed you. That's rough. Artie. Ozzy. Wait, Ozzy. I need to ask to make sure first. Oz doesn't say anything, but he nods. Althemia, you're aware of what we do. Probably more than anyone, considering you were a profiler. Yes. I hadn't figured out Tiger had an accomplice, though. I guess I'm one of them, too, now. What can I say? I'm more suited to gathering information from the sidelines. Blending in with my surroundings, making small talk. Be it online or offline. No wonder Oz hasn't been discovered yet. Arthur seems to be pretty meticulous. But that's besides the point. Do you see what I'm trying to get at? I do, and I'm okay with it. I sacrifice a lot of things to be a detective. Aside from a couple of people online, I don't have any friends. I'm not on speaking terms with my family. I alone have the time or energy to date. 
Maybe it's not the most admirable or healthy thing to do for someone, but my career was everything to me. It was the only thing that gave me a purpose. The only thing that made me feel like I had a soul. Like I was good for something. Like I existed. That bastard stole my soul. He stole my very life from me. And that's why no matter what, I'm going to get revenge. Heh. <laughs> Well, Artie. <laughs> All right, Pumpkin. You certainly got resolve. Welcome aboard. Does that mean... <laughs> oh, yeah, you can stay, Bambi. We're going to be a great team. All right. I'm glad you're in agreement. That means you won't mind sharing a room, will you? Oh no, wait a second, hold up, wait a minute. What the fuck do you mean, Arthur? Why? Well... Well, I do have an extra bed for occasional visits. I don't have that many bedrooms, you see. Only two. Then... However, considering you brought her here, Ozzy, I think it's more than fair that you share a room with Althemia. You certainly don't expect me to do that, do you? I mean... We wouldn't even be in this situation if someone had listened. Scary has gotten a whole other meaning now. Don't mess with Arthur if you know it's good for you. Uh, fine. Remember to add the partition. Yeah, yeah, I know. Bambi. Follow me, Bambi. Yes, sir. That's some partition, all right. You take the right one. Eh? The bed. Oh, um, sure. Once Oz takes off his shoes, he jumps right onto the blue bed and winds into his pillow. <sighs> Slowly but surely, my feet finally step into the room and I start gazing around. It's a nice room. It's all right, I guess. What's with the monkey plushie? It's a bear. A bear? <laughs> yep, a bear. Or at least an attempt at one. Arthur made it. He's not very good at arts and crafts, but he likes cute things, so he decorated his side of the room. Oh, I thought his room was, uh, well, the other one. Nah, Artie's too nice, so he usually leaves the bigger room for guests. But I guess this time he was really pissed. And he probably wanted us to get to know each other better or something. I see. After a slight pause, Oz gets up from the bed. Something the matter? No, no. Uh, why do you ask? Because you've been acting all fidgety since we got here. You haven't even sat down yet. As sharp as a tack, this guy. Seriously, what's up? I bite my lower lip and hold my arm. Sorry, I guess I was feeling a little awkward. I don't even have my stuff with me and the police must be looking all over for us, so I doubt I can go back home anytime soon. Hmm, yeah, that's true. But hey, you're not alone right now. We're a team, remember? We'll get you clothes and other things you might need. Bambi. So drop that fucking drooping face already, Bambi. <laughs> A smile suits you more. Heck, even your angry face. Oh, shut up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Oz. You can't be serious. No words are necessary. We just nod to each other and hurry over towards Arthur. Yes, sir. Arthur, what's wrong? Did something happen? Look for yourselves. Arthur points at the TV, which at first glance seems to be broadcasting the latest news. The Target News Agency. Bambi! Wait, Bambi, look. Uh-oh. Right in front of the silvering police station. 
Haslund King is giving a speech while officers, reporters, and curious bystanders listen. As expected, both Oz and I seem to have been added to the police's wanted list. But the most shocking thing of all is the news header at the bottom of the screen. Aslan King, soon to be chief of police, appointed by the Cedrian government. Swearing ceremony held in 10 days. Aw, oh, shit. What the fuck, man? Damn it all. Damn it all! <sighs> Until Aslan becomes the chief of police. me what <laughs> ow what I do what oh shit that's not what I meant to do there's it... not even many we only had like two chances to like pick options and stuff oh <laughs> Yes. Anything to make the beeping shut up. Oh. Yeah, that was quick. And I'm so dumbfounded. I'm so sad. I want more. Ah. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. We are going to start back at the beginning. But we're going to skip. Yeah, yeah. My name's Althenia. We're going to see what the other answer choices does. And even though there wasn't a whole lot. Uh, she, her. Skibbity-doo-dah. I don't want to be a vegetarian. This one I really don't want to choose the opposite answers for. Okay. So let's go with... Let's go and fuck this guy. Get mad. <laughs> Let's go just get mad at him. Hang on, let me save. <coughs> Let's get mad. You've got some nerve, asshole. What the fuck did you call me, dipshit? Asshole, shithead, douchebag. Need I go on? How is it my fault when it was you who wasn't paying attention? Funny coming from someone who was lost in fucking La La Land. I wasn't even crossing the street. You still need to be aware of your surroundings. That's my line. We continue glaring at each other for a few moments. Ugh. Whatever. I don't have time for this bullshit. What? A guy retrieves the spill contents from the ground and puts some away in his delivery backpack before hopping onto his bike once again. <sighs> Arthur's gonna fucking kill me. Damn it all! Sayonara, dipshit! Hope I don't see your ass wandering this street again. I make sure to show him the middle finger before he leaves. God! It's not like me to lose my temper to this extent. But he just pushed all of my buttons. Hopefully, no one from work saw that. I throw the wrecked bear bun in a nearby trash can. It's a shame, but I'll just buy another one later. Okay. Ba da 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 ba da ba do ba da ba. Okay, for this one we put um this. I didn't do anything, so. X fucking excuse me. You're the one who killed him. Asshole. I can't believe you'd stoop so low for a fake target. Oh, now he's a fake target, isn't he? How convenient. Let's kill an innocent ma'am and blame it on Tiger. Surely no one will notice. I have standards, dipshit. 
Oh, yeah, because killing is so righteous. <laughs> That's cute coming from a member of the police. This fucker. I hate that I can't deny that. Okay, let's suppose for a second that he's actually telling the truth. Oh, wait, I think I got this. All right, now we'll save here again. Uh, Earlier, Mandy wanted us to say, not if I kill him first, so we'll do this one. Not if I kill him first. <laughs> Holy shit. Did that bastard awaken a beast without knowing? Just a bit. Still, it's too early to think about how we're going to deal with him. We can't do anything while we're stuck here. Zoom! Okay, yeah, that was all. Okay, we'll go back to here. Better not risk it, apologize. It was totally his fault, and maybe a little bit my fault too. But I don't know this guy. What if he's violent? And I really don't want to flash my ID for something like this. Or maybe he's just having a bad day. Hey! Sorry. Was he not expecting that? I'm sorry. It's true that I wasn't paying attention, so I'm partially responsible. Even so, please, you should try to be more attentive too. Thankfully, it was just some food this time. But someone could really get hurt, you know? Let's both try to be more careful from now on. I'm... <sighs> okay, whatever. Hmm. As best as he can manage, the guy retrieves the spilled contents from the ground and puts them away in his delivery backpack before hopping onto his bike once again. Aww. <laughs> I quite like that one. And then he leaves. Well, that was something. I throw the wrecked bear bun in a nearby trash can. There we go. It's a shame. But I'll just buy another one later. Da -da 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 -da. Here. This is bad. I'm gonna lose my job. Shit, 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 shit. This is bad. This is really bad. At this rate, I'm gonna lose my job. Are you fucking ignoring me? Yes. Shut up and let me have my internal crisis. Maybe Aslan will understand if I explain it to him. Hey! I don't have time for stupid questions. You even saw me come into the office, man. Well, I didn't fucking kill this guy. Okay, let's suppose for a second that he's actually telling the truth. Okay, and well, that's gonna continue. Let's... Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I still need my job back. I need to recover my job, eventually, and it'll be even harder if he dies. But I'll make sure to absolutely ruin him so that he can never set foot in this station again. Or any, for that matter. Fucking hell, do you need some ice with that frostiness? <laughs> Still... Wah, that was all. Oh, we went through all the options. <laughs> That's all we got, guy. <laughs> I'm so sad. I'm so Lucky sad. Hell. Do you need some ice with that? I didn't know back actually meant go back a word. <gasps> He's adorable. I love him. <laughs> I love him.